Alright guys, welcome once again to turn two. I feel like after a lot of travel, a lot of breaks, we're finally back in action. We finally got Artosis and I both on the show at the same time again. We've got two awesome guests too. But first of all, my co-host Artosis, how's it going man? Uh, it's going well. I'm a little bit tired. I'm still really jet lagged. Just got back like two days ago, but I'm happy to finally be home in Korea with you, Doa. I can definitely feel the same thing over here. And we got to cast that great King of the Hill. It was awesome. And speaking of the King of the Hill, we have our winner here, our three-time champion, actually, on the I Heart You King of the Hill. It's none other than Savitz. How's it going, dude? Not Trump. You'll get your turn. Be patient. <laughs> What's <laughs> up, Savitz? Yeah. Three times now. Really glad. It was a That's pretty good. tough series. It was definitely the hardest one I've had so far. Like, yeah, we I was all the games. going into it. I knew it, that it would be a close one. Awesome. Well, we are going to talk about that a lot in just a moment. But first, we have to introduce our final guest. It is none other than the first ever sponsored Hearthstone Pro Gamer. It is Trump. What's up, Trump? Yo. Pleasure to be on the show. I see you rocking your, your Razor swag already, huh? Yeah. It's Stalin, yo. Nice. So, we just got done watching the I Hearth You King of the Hill. We saw Savitz win it in Game 7. It was really, really exciting. And uh, I, I got to say, I mean, the thing that really struck me the most about the King of the Hill that was really cool is that we got to see a really good representation of a lot of the top decks right now. And not just that the decks were there, but also the interactions between these decks. We got to see, you know, what counters what, you know, and what's supposed to counter what. And really, any good CCG, every top deck has its counter. So I just want to ask Savitz right away, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that's a, an accurate statement that we got a really good representation of that kind of thing for the current state of Hearthstone right now? Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, there was a lot of countering going on there. And uh, we had we had practiced a lot together with Ico for the 2P tournament. And we, had, we had felt like we had the counters figured out. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the only thing maybe that was a little bit more needed was even more Stranglethorn Tigers. I didn't think the <laughs> amount of Stranglethorn Tigers really reached what it could have in that King of the Hill, but maybe we'll get a little bit luckier last time. Uh, Trump, you've been watching a lot of these, and no doubt you'll be playing it eventually, I hope. I guess yep. it's not exactly like a formal request, but we want to get you in there eventually, for sure. But uh, what do you think? I mean, uh, what do you think about the match? Oh, I thought that match series was awesome. Uh, great players, even you, Ecop. That was a uh, good deck, good <laughs> matches. Even Ecop. <laughs> even even Ecop. Dan, opinions? Uh, I really liked it. I liked the deck choices, and I thought it was really interesting that Ecop decided to run the Hunter deck. I think he probably used that, he threw that in because he knew that Savages would use the, the Mage deck. So it's kind of cool to see that, that little bit of back and forth. Whereas Savages, why did you choose to use uh, a Paladin deck instead of a Hunter deck, knowing that Ecop would use the Mage deck? What? Like when? Like, uh, in, the, in the King of the Hill, right, you didn't use OTK Hunter. Instead, I you chose to use a Paladin deck. I had it prepared. Like, I didn't know if it was like, supposed to have only four decks set out, but I had, like, six decks. And Ecop had also. And the Hunter was only there to counter the mates because of the players. And it's as hard as a counter gets. So, I don't know if we did, like, mistake there having more than four decks prepared. We both did it. So, <laughs> well, I guess at least fair. you both did it, I guess, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm really curious about the Shaman deck, actually, that uh, was brought out against Hunter OTK. Because we don't really see a whole lot of Shaman right now at the top, top level in uh, Hearthstone, especially with the, the Doge House or the Dog House, however you want to see it. Shaman just hasn't been quite as popular lately. Uh, kind of talk about that deck a little bit. Yeah, well, the Shaman is it's going up like, in value right now because not many people are running hard removal. And the key card there is Earth Elemental because Earth Elemental right now is, is quite amazing. And the next step is people adding one Assassinate Rogue and all the hard removal, basically running one or even two of once it gets there, but as, lo as long as people don't run those cards, the summon is really good. And the reason I picked it for the um, against the Hunter is because of the extra tone. And actually, in hindsight, um, in all of my decks, the only regret is not running Feral Spirits 
because mm. that guy has been going down in our like rankings or how do you want to say it? but we don't value it very high right now because of the overload too but it really messes up the next turn and mm. two three doesn't do much but i thought that the, it would still be really strong because of the possibility of uh don't throw them and stuff like that yeah, as a counter to Hunter OTK, I think Feral Spirit really would work well in there because yes. I feel like a lot of Hunter OTK, some of them do, but a lot of them don't run multi shots. So if you don't really have that sort of concern with it, the Feral Spirits are usually a pretty safe option. Uh, Trump, what do you think about the uh, the the disuse, I guess you could say, of some of those hard removals? We're not really seeing assassinate and things like that that much anymore. Uh, do you think we're going to see it come back here in the near future? Now is kind of a response to all these people sort of taking advantage of it. Uh, taking advantage of shaman cards such as Earth Elemental, I take it. Well, here's the thing. Right now, Assassinate is too slow for the format. Uh, we saw a few blistering pace cards. Like, what are you going to hit with Assassinate? You're going to hit a yeah. Defender of Argus, um, Shattered Sun Cleric or something. And that's just too slow. Yeah, the problem with those kind of cards is that in our doggy house, like, opinion, I, I would say that we all share the same opinion, Warlock is the like meta defining deck right now, and like mm -hmm. every every deck that we come up, all the new stuff, we always first be tested against Warlock to make sure that it actually works. And if it doesn't work to get against Warlock, it's probably not worth playing at all. And like the only only like real counter to the Warlock is the Mage, and the only reason why I actually managed to beat Ecops Mage with the Warlock was the Fairy Dragon. Like I don't know if anyone else counted, but the Fairy Dragon that I coined out on first turn actually did, dealt 25 damage during the game, and it God. was still alive. The game <laughs> yeah. ended on nine. That's insane. But Mage can now, deal. God. Now there's uh, something that I'm I'm trying to get Simon to put up on the screen right now, and and uh, I feel like if we're talking about the current meta in Hearthstone, it's a really good thing to take a look at, and it's basically just a list that you put together, uh, Savits, of like all these neutral cards that we're seeing in, in pretty much every deck. And we don't see every single one of these neutral cards in every deck, but we see a good representation of them in a mm. lot of stuff, you know, with a couple class cards thrown in, kind of depending on, on what class we're talking about. Maybe we can zoom in a little bit there, too. But, uh, you know, I this is kind of what we were talking about on the show uh, two weeks ago, where people have sort of figured out that direct damage right now in Hearthstone just isn't really that valuable when you compare it to buffing the other creature, you know, having that extra damage coming in the forms of buffs, and then getting a new creature on the board in addition to all that, it really does kind of beat the direct damage. Um, do you think we're going to see some sort of, I'm just going to put this one out there open, and maybe I should direct this at Artosis because he hasn't talked for a little while, but, you know, what are we going to see as far as, like, direct damage spells? Like, what's their place in Hearthstone right now, really? Well, I think the only damage spells that are really, really good are, like, well, obviously, like, Lightning Storm is nice because it hits everything, but I think it's just, like, the really cheap-ass tempo-y spells, like Backstab or, like, yeah. um, Soul Fire, of course. Uh, you know, Demon Fire comes to mind because it's really flexible in buffing your own minions to actually just make them even better in cases like that. But all the rest of the damage spells just don't stack up to this set of minions where you can... You, just, you look at the deck you're playing, and you're like, well, you know, I have all these minions that buff each other, and then I also have fairy dragons and harvest mm -hmm. golems, and it's like, you can never deal with all that with just removal. Yeah, so I think yeah. it's just like literally the cheapest stuff just to give yourself a little bit of an edge, because as soon as you have that edge, you start choosing all the trades, and then you win the game. No, I, I agree. I mean, I feel like it either has to cost, you know, zero or one be really cheap, or it has to hit everything. Like, absolutely mm -hmm. everything. I feel like those are kind of the two requirements right now for direct damage. Uh, what, what did you want to say, Savitz? Yeah, I was just getting back on that list. That it's like, the list is just basically full of creatures that buff, either buff or go well with buffs. Mm -hmm. So it, two for one creatures like Squire and Golems. And then there's the Novice Engineer, which draws a card. And, but it still can't be ignored because of the buffs coming. And then there's the Fairy. Now, mm -hmm. I want to I ask Trump something here now, because Trump, you're kind of the arena master. You're the, the king of neutral minions, so to speak. So is there anything on that list that you would add? Like, are there any uh, neutral minions that you think are maybe getting a little bit neglected right now? Ah, from the constructed perspective, yeah? Yeah, from constructed perspective, of course, yeah. Uh, I think Imp Master is pretty good, and we might see that sometime. Uh, that's mm -hmm. also a card that 
could be buffed and whatnot. Other than that, though, these oh and loot hoarder, uh, that might be out of on its way out because of the rogue hero ability, though. Mm. And also Argent Square. I feel like we're seeing well. There, I, I believe. That, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Savitz, but in the Frost Giants deck, uh, you do run loot hoarder, right? But that's really one of the only decks I've seen it in, so it is kind of under the radar a little bit right now. Yeah, basically, it's just uh, for doing something other than hero powering, and we want to keep the cards kind of high because of the uh, the mountain giants coming up. But mm -hmm. on the loot hoarder subject, I have to say that I feel like I have tried it out in every single deck, and I always end up cutting it because I feel like I just fall behind in the early game too much because it's so easy to deal with as it's only one toughness. Yeah, the one toughness really, it's its tough to, well, I mean, it's tough to get it to live early on in Hearthstone right now. I mean, two health is tough enough as it is, but I, I like the idea of Imp Master. I mean, it's its always going to be pretty good in Paladin with Sword of Justice. It's always going to be good, you know, in certain Shaman decks because of Bloodlust. Uh, but its it's got that drawback where it really doesn't buff things. But I feel like we're right on the edge of maybe seeing some of those, like, hyper-aggro token-based decks come back a little bit, maybe? What do, what do you think, Artosis? Am I way off on that? Um, or do you, think you know, I feel like they're just a little bit too slow and stuff. Like, I personally really like the Imp Master, as Trump is saying, but I think a big piece of, like, why that might come back is because it actually has, like, a high health and you can buff it and you'll continue to get those minions, but... It's like mm -hmm. this set of minions that we just showed on screen is these are the ones that buff each other. These are like you do not see a deck that doesn't have Shattered Suns, Dark Irons, and Defender of Argus. Almost like oh, that Mage deck is the only good deck I think right now that doesn't run those in construction. Yeah. And the Argents as well, and the Fairy Dragons and stuff like that. It's like these things actually just go so well together. You know, it, like how do you deal with the Fairy Dragon if you can't target it and you keep buffing it? It's like. So I the token stuff like I just I feel it's not fast enough it's not good enough against this type of thing. Um, yeah, that's that's my thought. <laughs> All right, works for me. Uh, so let's see. There's something else I want to talk about. Oh yeah, um, you know one card that we still you know we talked about a little bit two weeks ago, but I want to bring it up again because we've got kind of new group of people. But it's one card that doesn't really buff anything, but we still see it in nearly every deck. We see Sylvanas all the time right now, and a lot of that is just the fact that she makes your opponent play completely differently. But uh, that makes me wonder. That makes me kind of think a little bit. Are there maybe some other neutral cards out there, you know, like that that maybe have a similar impact that we haven't been using quite as much? I mean, what what do you think, Trump? I mean, first of all, what do you think about Sylvanas? Secondly, in constructed, what do you think are maybe some other neutral minions that don't buff but maybe have that profound game impact too? Sure, I think uh, Sylvanas is a card that is just so good that it could be run and maybe should be run in almost every single deck. Uh, it's just a very powerful stats and has a very powerful effect. Um, other than that, I think that there are some... I think Leroy Jenkins could be run in a lot of the aggro decks as a mm -hmm. big finisher. And uh, I, I'm starting I to like see that. a lot of that as well. Uh, yeah. I have one card that I want to bring up. Um, I actually think that now that I have played with the uh, with, uh, Mage Giants or Frozen Giants, whatever you want to call it, uh, I figured out that Doomsayer is actually a really powerful card because it's, it's for two mana and it not only kills the stuff on the board but it also prevents your opponent from playing more creatures on the next turn. And like uh, the worst case scenario is really like if it if it gets silenced but no, no one is playing silence right now. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, without silence you can just kill it if you, if you can deal seven damage to it. But even then, it soaks up seven damage for two mana, which is in constructed. It's really powerful, and like for warlocks, usually the only way when it's played on early turns is to is to soul fire it, which is still pretty good value. Yeah, generally it seems like right now at its worst, Doomsayer is kind of like seven armor, and at its best, it's almost like paying two mana to take an extra turn. You know? Yeah, it's extremely powerful card, and I think in the future once. Uh, like uh, more AOE and maybe like possibilities of building uh, control decks other than mates it, it might be viable. I think Doomsayer will absolutely go up in value because of the just the, just, just the sheer power of preventing opponent from playing creatures on the following turn. 
I think it's absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. But right now, other classes are pretty much limited to one AOE, and like, I don't, I don't know. There's just no breezes or anything. So I, I, I just don't see it happening right now. So it might not be playable anywhere else than mates. But I think that once we get a few more patches, few more cards, I think Doomsayer will be a big deal in control decks. It makes you wonder a little bit, you know, with this mid range, you know, will we see control coming back a lot? And and like whenever you mention control, the next word that probably is going to come out of most people's mouths is artosis. So uh, what do you think, man? I mean, control decks coming back, priest maybe, shaman uh, maybe. What would you I think, do? Well, I I don't know. I don't think priest is really playable right now. But control decks in general. The, the only control deck I actually like right now is that mage deck that we saw these guys use in the King of the Hill. The Every other deck, I feel like you are literally just playing that core set of minions with the, the flavor of the class and maybe a few little cute tricks in there, but uh, control just seems a little bit too slow right now, and I, I think we do need like another set to start to bring that back, because even though you have yeah. some cards that you're like, ooh, this might make a control deck work like Doomsayer, it's not enough on its own, because... The amount of damage that just comes out of someone's hand, like, when do you play a Doomsayer to stop one of these players that's just playing a, a pumping deck, you know? It's, if you wait for turn three, they're, they're going to have seven damage on the board, right? <laughs> so Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is, is a lot of us have been talking lately, you know, as we play and as we practice, you know, are we kind of reaching the end of the meta for this current set of cards? You know, I, we've talked about this before, but if you look at expansions for Magic, Magic the Gathering, we're definitely hitting that time frame where everybody's kind of figured out the current set of cards and figure out what's going to be, you know, best, quote unquote, and things like that. So we're hitting that with Hearthstone. Uh, I want to talk about that a little bit. I want to get Trump's opinion on it, but Sevitz was about to say something right before I started talking, so so what do you want to say first? Yeah, I wanted to add that I absolutely, first of all, of, I want to say that I absolutely agree with that. I think we are hitting point, point right now that decks, there probably won't be many like completely new decks surfacing with the cards given right now. And I think that the main problem right now is the lack of AOE spells for other classes than mates. Because they're just, it's just not enough when there's only one spell, like it's Consecration or Holy Nova, or like that. And those are those are really like quite weak spells actually. I think like in Magic the Gathering, there's usually like when if you play Control, you always have a, like some kind of board clear, so it's splashing in the Wrath of God or whatever. But you have the board clear, but right now it's just not there for the other classes. What do you think, Trump? Hit about uh, Hearthstone kind of hitting the end of its first sort of meta cycle. I somewhat agree with that, and as far as control goes, I it's tough to say whether control is weak or aggro is too strong because the <laughs> Shattered Sun Cleric is like is like a four four haste or four four charge, and uh, Dark Iron Dwarf is like a six four charge, sort of. Mm -hmm. So those are really strong. Um, yep. Oh, That's and I also good. wanted to direct to Savids. I think that Doomsayer is so good that I was surprised that you didn't run two of them in the mage deck or the general. Yeah, well, I think it, it actually 